we should move planet Earth to escape our expanding sun. Have a wandering Earth, that is. That's what a rocket scientist explains. Well, we know that our sun is about halfway through its life. And it has another 5 billion years to go before it starts turning, expanding, taking in basically us, all the near planets to the Sun, perhaps extending all the way out to Jupiter, and then imploding in itself, becoming a, a red dwarf star, which is going to be even worse because even if we do survive, the flames, the solar flames that it will be giving off will just... Uh, directly impact us and wipe off our atmosphere if we're still around by then. But uh, these are uh, astronomical scenarios that uh, are unbelievably harsh for us. This is on the conversation. This is written by Matteo Ceriotti, lecturer in Space Systems Engineering, University of Glasgow. In the Chinese science fiction film The Wandering Earth, Recently released on Netflix, humanity attempts to change the Earth's orbit using enormous thrusters in order to escape the expanding sun and prevent a collision with Jupiter. The scenario may one day come true. In five billion years, our sun will run out of fuel and expand, most likely engulfing our Earth. A more immediate threat is a global warming apocalypse. Moving the Earth to a wider orbit could be a solution, and it is possible in theory. But how could we go about it, and what are the engineering challenges? For the sake of argument, let's assume that we aim to move the Earth from its current orbit to an orbit 50% further from the Sun, similar to where Mars is today, for example. We've been devising techniques to move small bodies, asteroids from their orbit for many years, mainly to protect our planet from impacts. Some are based on an impulsive and often destructive action. A nuclear blast near or on the surface of the asteroid, or a kinetic impactor, for example, a spacecraft colliding with the asteroid at high velocity to knock it off its trajectory path. These are clearly not applicable to Earth due to their destructive nature. Other techniques instead involve a very gentle, continuous push over a long time, provided by a tugboat docking, docked on the surface of the asteroid or a spacecraft hovering near it, pushing through gravity or other methods. But this would be impossible for Earth, as its mass is enormous compared to even the largest asteroids. Electric thrusters? We have actually already been moving the Earth from its orbit. Every time a probe leaves the Earth for another planet, it imparts a small imp impulse on the Earth in the opposite direction, similar to the recoil of a gun. Luckily for us, but unfortunately for the purpose of moving the Earth, this effect is incredibly small. SpaceX Falcon Heavy is the most capable launch vehicle today. We would need 300 billion billion launches at full capacity in order to achieve the orbit change to Mars. The material making up all these rockets would be equivalent to 85% of the Earth, leaving only 15% of Earth in Mars orbit. As you can imagine, it's not feasible, obviously. An electrical thruster is a much more efficient way to accelerate mass. In particular, ion drives, which work with firing out a stream of charged particles that propel the vessel forward. We could point and fire an electric thruster in the trailing direction of the Earth's orbit. The oversized thruster should be a thousand kilometers above sea level, beyond Earth's atmosphere, but still solidly attached to the Earth with a rigid beam to transmit the pulsing, the pushing force. With an iron beam, ion beam fired at 40 kilometers per second, in the right direction, we would still need to eject the equivalent of 13% of the mass of Earth in ions in order to move the remaining 87%. Now sailing on light, as light carries momentum but no mass, we might also be able to continuously power a focused light beam such as a laser. 
the required power would be collecting, collected from the sun and no earth mass would be consumed. Even using the enormous 100 gigawatt laser plant envisaged by the Breakthrough Starshot project, which aims to propel spacecraft out of the solar system to explore neighboring stars, it would still take 3 billion billion years of continuous use to achieve the orbital change. But light can also be reflected directly from the sun to the earth using a solar sail stationed next to the earth. Researchers have shown that it would need to reflect a reflective disk 19 times bigger than the earth's diameter to achieve the orbital change over a time scale of 1 billion years. Interplanetary billiard a well-known technique for two orbiting bodies to exchange momentum and change the velocity is with a close passage or gravitational slingshot. This type of maneuver has been extensively used by interplanetary probes. For example, the Rosetta spacecraft that visited Comet 67P in 2014-16 during its 10-year journey to the comet passed in the vicinity of the Earth twice in 2005 and 2007. As a result, the gravity field of the Earth imparted a substantial acceleration to Rosetta, which would have been unachievable solely using thrusters. Consequently, the Earth received an opposite and equal impulse, although this did not have any measurable effect due to Earth's mass. But what if we could perform a slingshot using something much more massive than a spacecraft? Asteroids can certainly be redirected by the Earth, and while the mutual effect on Earth's orbit will be tiny, this action can be repeated numerous times to ultimately achieve a considerable Earth orbit change. Some regions of the solar system are dense with small bodies such as asteroids and comets, the mass of many of which is small enough to be moved with realistic technology, but still orders of magnitude larger than what can be realistically launched from Earth. With accurate trajectory design, it is possible to exploit so-called uh, delta V leveraging. A small body can be nudged out of its orbit as, and as a result swing past the Earth, providing a much larger impulse to our planet. This may seem exciting, but it has been estimated that we would need a million such asteroid close passes, each space about a few thousand years apart to keep up with the sun's expansion. So what's the verdict? Of all the opinions available, using multiple asteroid slingshots seems the most achievable right now. But in the future, exploiting light might be the key. If we learn how to build giant space structures or super powerful laser arrays, these could also be used for space exploration. But while it is theoretically possible and may one day be technically feasible, it might actually be easier to move our species to uh, our planetary next door neighbor Mars, which may survive the sun's destruction. We have, after all, already landed on and roved its surface several times. After considering how challenging it would be to move the Earth, colonizing Mars colonizing Mars, making it habitable, and moving Earth's population there over time might not sound as difficult after all. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on, not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today more of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. 
and we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.